It's recording. Cool. Got three hours worth of recording time. Oh. Ah. <laughs> okay. Oh, and that's the other thing we can do. Are you working besides the 365 day random year project? Or what else are you working on right now? I'm still sort of working on, which is also on the easel, um, my uh, Somnium project, which I kind of finished, but it's not really finished. So it's kind of sort of trailing, and I'm deciding what to do with it. Uh, the Somnium, it's, it's a book by Kepler. It's the first ever science fiction book, written 400 years ago. And this talks about um, the voyage to the moon uh, and uh, so describes celestial motion, you know, very much like Galileo did at the time, only he got into big trouble. So Kepler thought, well, if I'm going to write about it, I better make it a fiction, so I'm not going to get burned at the stake. And uh, so he accidentally wrote a science fiction book. Um, and it's not a great piece of fiction. He's really more of a mathematician. But I thought that. It's never been illustrated, so if I create a series of works based on this, I can sort of maybe pull the narrative together. And uh, I've already created, you know, like small works and then um, did some larger works like these. And I would like to sort of get it full circle and make it into a book again. And I've already started sort of, you know, um, even with the text, so sort of, you know, make, working with the text and maybe making it into an art book. So that idea is still, so I, there are too many possibilities. I have too many ideas for this project. And I'm thinking that the more I work on it, eventually some ideas will die off. And then the best idea will just continue to live and eventually will be what I do. Well, you can also look at it as the easiest idea is the one that works its way out. And the tough ones are the ones that fall, beside, fall to the side. Yeah, you don't fall to the side. I always do the hard thing. Okay. I never make it easy for myself. I tend to realize there's certain times where I just are plug away and then there are other times where the wonderful ideas and which point uh, they just there are other things that get in the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially other ideas. Yes, exactly. A little piece of paper and break down everything. Good. It feels so nice to cross those things off. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. To do this. That's yes. Great that. And then yeah, continue on mining uh, which one what you're doing. So the ideas that you have of future projects. Future projects. Um, yeah. I have a lot going. It's just it's hard to decide what I'm gonna do next. Okay. I you know, I, I like the social media thing and I've you know started for example the Somnium book. I tweeted it out, you know, starting from the last line and then going backwards so that now you read the entire Twitter account, it's the whole entire book, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so I've got a couple of ideas there. And yeah, I don't know, it's like beginnings of ideas and nothing has really crystallized. Okay. And so that was just a, such a winner of a question. <laughs> <laughs> what about older projects that you're particularly pleased with or particularly unhappy with but nonetheless are done? Um, I like the Monsoon project, which I did in Singapore. Um, I, w I was really into meteorology before I went way out into space. And I also th thought it was really interesting um, living in the tropics um, where you really don't have any seasons. Um, you live, I live right on the equator, like Singapore is one degree north of the equator. The sun rises at seven o'clock every day, it sets at seven o'clock every night. And the weather's always the same. It's always 32 degrees or maybe 31 degrees. But then comes the monsoon. And at around four o'clock, pretty much like clockwork, the sky just explodes and there's more water than air in the air and it's just a wonderful phenomenon and it doesn't get cold. It's not like when it rains here, it's miserable. And these big fat raindrops and you just want to stand outside. And I said, that's what I'm going to do. And I, um, I took very large canvases and I just smothered them with acrylic gel and I stood outside with them. So I would capture the raindrops if they would fall onto the gel and then dry and they look like little moon crates. And every rainstorm has its own signature. Um, sometimes it's lots of you know even drops, and if it's a real good monsoon, it's like these big fat mammoth drops, and then with a few small ones thrown in. And and that was very cool. I mean, you could see rain. You can only normally feel weather, and that was making it visible. 
and I also started cutting into the canvas and sewing it and um, sort of leaving empty spaces in the canvas and sort of you know using strings and opening it up and then mounting another canvas behind the stretcher. So the painting became a three-dimensional object. And if you hang it right, you get sunlight falling onto the strings and then the painting becomes even a sundial. So it ties in the whole idea of weather again. That was a really nice series. I did that for a long time until I got really tired of the sewing. How, how would you, just other than the acrylic gel, would you add paint to them or stuff? And so you would cut yeah. yeah, they were all really brightly colored. Um, I would let the gel dry first and then I would paint on top. I wouldn't, you know, mix the pigment in with the gel already because I wouldn't know what kind of rainstorm it was going to be and what color would be most appropriate. Okay, and how many, how long, how large? Uh, they went from anything from like 20 by 20 inches to 48 by 60, something yeah. like that. I did at least like 20, 30 of those. I mean a lot. I worked on this for like two, three years. Okay. With something like that, because with the Somnium project there is obviously a finite beginning and end because the book is already written. Mm -hmm. With the uh, One Random Year project there's a beginning and end because there's January 1st yeah. and December 31st. That's right. Project like that, how did you figure out that it was over? Or well, was when that? I moved here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no more. No more monsoon. Okay. So I had ice and snow to deal with. So I thought, ah, oh, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take my paintings and now I'm going to put them in the snow of the ice. Mm -hmm. So I was already working a lot on astronomy then. And so I thought, what I'm going to do is um, I was working on this uh, moon project and, and the sur surfaces of the other moons. And Europa, the moon. Jupiter. People think there may be microbes life there because it has a bit of an atmosphere, it has lots of liquid water. It's and really cold. It's, it is cold, but it's liquid water. So as long as it's liquid, you're good. It's warm enough. And so I thought, you know what I'll do is I painted a lot, bunch of microbes, these, these just little paintings of microbes, and I will freeze them into La Cachambeau at uh, my ex uh, in Las Cottage. And then we'll see, and I, I, I saw you know, the paintings like aging and being cracked and being just sort of destroyed by the, uh, by the ice and snow. Um, my family were taking bets about what would happen to the paintings if they would all like just uh, float off to the other end of the lake, if I would never see them again, they would be crushed by, by the ice uh, in the spring. So I had my friend Paul come with this um, massive um, chainsaw. There was already like about this much ice on the lake. We cut holes, I dumped in my paintings, and then it sort of froze over. So I would go there and check on them, and it was beautiful just to see how they froze. Um, the uh, stretchers, there was a little bit of um, air trapped in them. So they would make these bubbles, these air bubbles, and the air bubbles would get trapped in the ice and made these beautiful formations. So I would go there every weekend and try to find, so I don't have to shovel the snow, find my paintings on the ice, and, and take pictures. Mm -hmm. And actually, in the end, that's what became the artwork. Because in the spring, I recuperated the paintings, they looked fine. Like nothing happened to them at all. I was really disappointed. I was hoping for, you know, the process of nature. But if you paint on acrylics and canvas, like these things are pretty indestructible. But uh, the photos were awesome. So that's what then, that, that, that's how I managed to tie in nature with my astronomy thing as a painting. Yeah, I'm trying to think in terms of another way to sort of capture snowflakes and snowfall and winter and so on. Nothing is jumping out of me. Yeah, it's the, the thing with the ice and snow is it really preserves well. Mm -hmm. So if you want to sort of capture any kind of process, it's tricky. You know, yeah, it's certainly, I don't, photographic. I'd almost be thinking almost like with, with painting, it's a, with oils, work any differently and then be uh, unstretched? Yeah, I, I was, you know, trying all kinds of stuff. Uh, the following year I thought maybe sculpture. I made these little wooden sculptures because it's organic and then I would take like rusty screws and, you know, have things a little pre-aged and I was hoping it would rust more and I dumped them in the lake and then what I did there was I dumped them in the lake at the beginning of the season before it froze over because I wanted to capture like how the ice forms over them. But what happened was it suddenly froze um, and then it snowed so the ice was completely opaque so I saw nothing. 
and they just they were gone. Okay. But that was the end of my project. And then in spring, I tried to find them again, and I recuperated mm -hmm. some. But uh, yeah, that, that didn't work at all. And then let it back to you another way. And then think about it. Just take the paintings, stick them into the ice, or stick them into the water and have the ice form, mm -hmm. and then figure out some way to exhibit them in a chunk of ice. That'll be nice. Uh, whether it's, yeah. whether it's uh, walk in refrigerator, work with some sort of butcher shop or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a Damien Hirst kind of thing where you have a shark and you need the yes. tag to, to show it in. So, yeah. yeah. And then that's, that's a logistical nightmare. How would you transport this? It would always have to be plugged in somewhere because mm -hmm. if your artwork melts, you're screwed. <laughs> you have to refreeze it. Uh, it also could be like, uh, who is it that I just saw recently? Paul Lutherland's work, where um, decided to uh, do sculptures out of butter. Nice. Uh, and a little bit Joseph Boyce, though. Uh, probably, I would imagine, very Joseph Boyce. <laughs> but it was Montreal buildings. Oh, nice. And then he photographed what happens to uh, what you want, butter sculptures after they've been exhibited for a month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it could be the sort of idea that, yes, there's the ice there, and then it just, if it's a large enough block of ice, you come and see it at the beginning where all you see is the ice and at the end it's you actually get to see the painting. That'd be nice. It's like a mammoth on trees yes. it has a mm -hmm. Yeah. See once you start a project yes. mm -hmm. and they fail, uh, especially when they fail, you can develop a lot of new ideas. Mm -hmm. Because that really means that you experiment mm -hmm. and you 